Well, good evening, everyone. It's April 24th, 2019. And we'd like to welcome you to our webinar for EDU 807, Forging the Future of Formative Assessment. And tonight, our presenters are mm -hmm. Melissa Blake and Nancy Hyduk. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Melissa, and you can read a little bit about me on the screen. We thought we would be a little bit more personal tonight. So here's some um, very exciting information about me. Um, some very cute pictures of my kids who make it very tricky to make my uh, house stay clean. Um, so I've been in education for a little over 14 years. I've been in the same district pretty much the whole time. I uh, spent a little time in South Africa, uh, did a year-long student teaching stint in Owasso, and I'm about to celebrate my 10th anniversary with my husband. Uh, Nancy, what about you? Well, there's some information on the screen about me. I'm Nancy, and I started teaching actually in northern Michigan, uh, not there now, and um, probably started about the same time as most of you were born. So yeah, don't figure out that age. Um, uh, let's see, so I, I've been teaching most of that time. I did take some time and work as an environmental field scientist for a few years. Um, I have lots of dogs, as you can see, and they are way messier than Melissa's children. <laughs> children. Um, and my oldest baby turns 30 in June. So I guess that means I have to stop using the excuse that I am still trying to lose the baby fat. <laughs> Time to let go. <laughs> well, we would like to talk to you about two technology tools that we spent some time uh, exploring. And we also want to talk about how you can effectively determine the value of technology tools in general um, and the importance of using tech tools with some teaching strategies. So formative assessment is what we're really going to be looking at tonight and we, um, we want to find some tools to help with formative assessment but before we can do that we really needed to look at what purpose we believe formative assessment has and there's a lot of different avenues that you can take with this actually and I obviously you know we all like to to get that for need to get that formative assessment to make sure our students are on track make sure they're um, understanding and comprehending and growing and the other thing though that I really wanted to find a tech tool for is something that um, is going to give me the formative assessment I need to help assess my lessons and my strategies and my delivery to make sure that that what I'm doing is effective. So there's times where I need to, in the classroom, just adjust my lesson on the fly. I mean, it's just not going well, and I need that formative assessment to give me that feedback for me um, so that I know if I'm, if I'm on track or if they're just not getting it and it's time to scrap that and go in a whole new direction. Um, I also use it to adjust tomorrow's lesson, because if today didn't go well, tomorrow is not going to be what I had planned, <laughs> so going to have to start over again. Um, or maybe today went really well, and I have to, you know, so again, I have to adjust tomorrow's lesson based on the formative feedback, you know, the feedback from the formative assessment today. So that's kind of what I see the purpose for, and Melissa, what, what purposes do you see for formative assessment? Uh, well. I use it to get a really good score on my evaluation. Um, okay, that's only partially a joke uh, because it actually does count for our, our eval. Um, but the other serious part is that I think students really need that feedback because they need to know where they're at in their learning, um, which is why I think it's really important to do this frequently. I mean, it should be way more important than summative assessment. And I think as teachers, it's our job to make sure that we're doing this in a lot of different formats, um, providing them different opportunities to do it um, in different ways to show their learning not the same way as everyone else and not at the same, same uh, time as everyone else. Um, we, so we need to keep this in mind when we're choosing tech tools to make sure that they meet our needs. Right. And so 
<laughs> so, oh wait, there we go. So there's um, lots of tech tools out there. And when we look at them, most of them were, were basically just recreating the traditional ways that we would teach or the kids would learn. And they weren't focusing on learner-centered methods. So we thought, well, it's really important that we use a blend of these technologies along with our teaching strategies when we go to implement them for formative assessment, especially. Um, honestly, I think we've all kind of fallen into this trap. It's easy to do. Um, and sometimes it's just tough to find good tech tools and we're human and we work with other humans and <laughs> tech is tricky. So um, the important thing is that we try to do better for our students and hopefully this presentation will give us some tools to put us on the right path. Uh, so in EDU 807, we reviewed tech tools and I focused on GimKit, Insert Learning and Stick. Um, and I also experiment with other tools in my class. Uh, Nancy, which ones did you do? Uh, during um, this semester, I looked at Quizlize and Padlet, and I found that I could use them both for formative assessment. They were both really good, but on their own, they did not stack up to really, you know, up to par for what we're looking for. So um, to bring them to that level, I really needed to implement a lot of creative lesson plans along the way. Did you find that with yours, Melissa? Oh, for sure. Um, I have never found a tech tool that has worked for me without using strategies of my own on top of it. So, you know, to, to help with that, um, there's some things that you can, can do for assessing these tools to make sure that the value is where you want it to be. So we found that if we focus on standards, um, keep that in mind and use a, a clear framework, then that's going to help us to really assess the value of the tools to make sure that they are what we want them to be. So um, let's take a second and, and look a little closer at these. So the ISTE standards, um, that's the International Society for Technology and Education, they created standards for um, students, educators, administrators, and tech coaches. We're just going to look at the students and educators um, today. And these really aid in choosing your tools. You know, they align with and achieve the learning goals, and that's what we need them to do. So the keywords on the screen describe the main components for both of these um, sets of standards. And in, you know, let's talk for a second about these ISTE standards. In my experience, I have very limited knowledge and experience prior to starting the DET program of the whole ISTE standards. I was aware of them, but didn't really have any experience with them. Um, I was actually more aware of my state standards which are yeah, a little off there. So I know Michigan's is based on ISTE, but Pennsylvania is not. Um, so I was aware of those, but you know, honestly, when I would think of standards and, and look at my curriculum and everything, I really just focused on my content area standards, which were math. So I think that the ISTE standards, I didn't, I never realized how much they apply to everyone across the board. I think it's one of the best kept secrets out there that we really need to share. I agree that you say that they apply to everyone because um, I actually did know about them before taking this class, um, but we're not really encouraged to use them unless we're tech teachers. I'm not. I'm an ELA teacher. Um, and I think that's really sad that more districts or even core teachers aren't encouraged to use them um, because they're really unique in the way that they encourage learners to use technology in more active ways that content standards don't. So um, for me, I feel that they're useful because they can work in conjunction with my content standards and it pushes me, it challenges me um, to use tech for new purposes that, um, don't get me wrong, I'm not like an expert, I'm, I'm still a learner, I'm still working on this, um, but it is a challenge to make uh, tasks that are a little bit more authentic and beneficial for students. Um, and I think that's something that's really great about ISTE standards. So um, that's why we need these standards and the framework that we're about to talk about um, to help guide us. Absolutely, I agree. 
So that's the ISTE standards. Let's look at a framework. Um, we chose to focus on Liz Kolb's triple E framework. Um, and it helps us to evaluate tech tools to make sure that we're meeting um, the learning goals that we set forth. And when we do this, we're using a critical but not negative approach to educational technology. And it reminds us um, to take those rose colored glasses off and look at that shiny new tool from different angles. So the framework consists of three components that are on your screen. Uh, there's engagement, which talks about motivating and, and taking the student from a passive to an active learner. Uh, enhancement, it talks about um, demonstrate, it looks at demonstrating um, their knowledge. Is there different methods that they have for demonstrating their knowledge? Does it create supports and scaffolds for the learning? And the last one is extension, which talks about um, does the, the tool really help them to learn outside of their school day? Does it help them build skills for everyday life? And this is one that I had no idea existed. In fact, I didn't know any of these frameworks existed before EDU 807, um, which is kind of crazy because I'm a pretty self-reflective person and actually involve my students a lot in this process. Um, but apparently I was very inconsistent with it and there was no method to my madness. Um, and I just feel like these frameworks provide just another way to uh, use kind of a critical eye um, without getting caught up in how beautiful and awesome and exciting these new tech tools are. Um, did you know about any of these? I did not. Um, like you, I, <clears throat> I had not heard of this before. I haven't heard of any of them. But, you know, thanks to EDU 807 and Dr. Hicks, now we are all familiar with, we were introduced to a few different frameworks for ed tech. I think Melissa and I both really liked the triple E the best, so. Well, and since our name is on the presentation, I guess that's the benefit of getting to choose which one is on there. <laughs> that's right. And so we really like this one, so. Um, we're going to use this today, too, to evaluate the tools and that we're going to present and see how they stack up. So let's go ahead and get started with the tools. And the first one's mine that I'm going to talk about. So when I went through and I was evaluating tech tools for formative assessment, I wanted um, to make sure of a few things. I wanted it to engage my students. I wanted to um, make sure that it offered them a variety of ways that they could actually demonstrate their knowledge, their, their understanding of the concept, so I could really have a better overall view. And I wanted to, I wanted to find something that was going to allow me um, to kind of keep it, some access afterwards, you know, so they're not just doing something quickly and I, and I have to process all that information right away in my head and try to remember, oh yeah, little Joey knows it, but little Susie has no clue. And, and you know, you get 30 kids in the classroom and you really have to, you know, be quick on that formative assessment. So keeping all those in mind, this brought me to the answer pad. So let's take a look at that. Um, the answer pad has potential, great potential to increase student engagement and enhance learning. Um, it's effective teaching strategy, if you use effective teaching strategies in it, you can easily meet some ISTE standards on its own, yeah, but we're gonna talk about that later. Uh, it is available on most devices. So your kids can access this through the classroom computers, um, on tablets, on their own cell phones. There is a free account when you first join in, you can um, join free, but it's very limited. You'll find that um, it doesn't do a whole lot. So unfortunately, that's kind of a downside. But the premium account does everything, and that's just under $10 for the entire year. So it's actually very, very affordable. Now, if you find that you and all your co-teachers want to get in on it, they actually have school accounts. So you can always do that. So the answer pad has two main features to its system. The first one is Quick Connect, and that's a... Um, interactive student response system and it will assess both you can assess both individual and your whole class understanding with this um, particular thing it reminds me a little bit of Kahoot but without that competitive game feel going on or that setting uh, it's a really versatile format for formative assessment it's got lots of different ways you can do that 
Um, the other one is the answer sheets. And this is where you would create digital answer sheets. You can upload quizzes and tests and go totally paperless. Um, it's similar to Quizlet, but tracks more than just their progress. So it's actually a little more similar to Quizalize that I reviewed earlier in the semester, but um, that lacks that added interactive feature of the Quick Connect. So this one's better. Uh, and this one does give detailed individual and whole class reports as well. So that's kind of a nice feature and we'll look a little bit at that in a second. So when you sign in, um, actually when you first sign in as a teacher, you see a different um, dashboard. This is the dashboard after you've been in and you've created groups because you can put your classes into groups and, and save things by group. So this is the standard dashboard that you would see after you did that. It allows you to access everything and it's got a, a great built-in tutorial up in the top where it's circled. You'll see the word learn. That we'll look at in a second and that has all kinds of great information on all of the features in this program. They also have an amazing live chat and, and I absolutely mean amazing because I have live chatted with them. I've also been on where they're not online but you can still send a message and I will get an email as soon as they get it. Um, they are on the west coast so there's that time difference but uh, through the evening, all kinds of stuff. I've gotten interaction and I've went through and found some glitches and and hit them up on that that I'll talk about soon. And I and I would ask them about it. And I told them I was doing this webinar. And they were like, Oh, let us you know, anything we can help with and tell us and then today they sent me a message said, Well, let us know how that webinar goes. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Supportive. So, yeah, they are amazing. They, they really are. They, you know, it's fun. Um, so this is what the learn page looks like and you can see it's a tutorial and they have everything presented in both video and document form. So very, very helpful and that's available all the time. All right, so the quick connect, we'll talk about that for a minute here. This board, um, you, or this slide, you can see where this is how the dashboard then looks during a, a quick connect session and you would see all of your students work that they've sent in um, on their student device they only see their own and you're going to work from the student device but i'll be working with you and you'll be able to look at my screen and and see the teacher side as well so it's very cool now um, there's a unique code that the students get to connect and it's unique to every time you do a quick connect session you get a different code all right, so sometimes you might want to um, broadcast your entire screen up onto the board or, you know, whatever's in your room there to broadcast on. And to do this, it, you know, you're not going to really want to embarrass kids and all that. So you can actually display with the names off, which is very cool. So that encourages participation without that fear of embarrassment of classmates, you know, seeing that you don't know what you're doing or you've got the wrong answers. Um, you can also hold off on the answers until everybody submitted theirs and then show all the answers at once, which is nice for if you wanted to do polls or surveys, um, or if you just don't want, you know, the quick kid putting in their answer right away and then everybody just copies because they see it. So you don't want that. All right, so question types. Um, there are several different types of questions, as you can see from multiple choice to drawing to fill in all that good stuff. And we'll look a little bit more at that in a bit. Um, and <clears throat> there's also templates that they have that you can use, which are great. And unfortunately, during the free um, one, there's only 12 that are available. So yeah, you know, it, the premium is much better. Uh, you can also create your own, you could upload photos and annotate them. So that's all very cool. But we're going to take a, a close look during the demo at the Quick Connect feature. So right now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Answer Sheets feature. Okay, so the Answer Sheets is a grading solution system that they have, and you can upload your quizzes and your tests, and, and you create answer sheets for grading. Um, unlike Quizalize, which it's kind of similar to, and some others, there's no pre-made tests or quizzes to use. So none of that's there, you have to actually do your own. 
Um, but you can still give like a paper test or something if you were like in the class and just have them do their answers on there. Uh, it's graded instantly. The students get results right away and you get great view, um, detailed reports to view that we'll look at. So to create your answer sheet, it's really quite simple. You choose a grade level, you choose a standards framework, and if you see there on the screen, um, the common core for math and language arts are all preloaded, which is very cool. But if you want something else, on there, you can actually easily upload all your own standards. You just do it like in an Excel CVS file. So that's nice. And then you just create. Okay, so building that sheet, once you've created it, you choose, um, like, say, for your very first one, you're going to choose the format, multiple choice or, you know, shade in, all kinds of things that you can choose there. You want to um, choose the, the standard under the framework that you did and then you want to fill in what's the correct answer and then you move to the next question and these can be the format and the standard can be different for every question on your test which is great after you are done um, complete or making your answer sheet then you actually can choose a proficiency which is like you know anybody who scores 80 and up is proficient from 70 to 80 is average or whatever you can you can build that all in and that's then used in the reports to show you where everybody's at so it's kind of more um, a little more summative but it's nice to put together with the the formative end from quick connect okay so here's an example of what an answer sheet might look like and they all display if you look just to the right of all of the the different numbers um they all have that like little pad with the pencil that opens up to what you see there on the right of the screen and it's a drawing pad for them so you can actually have them show their work if you want so that's kind of a nice feature uh, you can actually do essay tests and you would open it up and you would actually read their essay and then you would manually score from a uh, preset numbers that you put in when you created it all right so they give you detailed reports and here's an example of one. It's a detailed and analysis report for group or individual. Uh, each student's total score is there, how they responded to each question. The blue shading is the correct one. So you can actually look at an individual question and see, okay, so did most of the class get it right? Did just a couple, you know, so it kind of gives you an idea too of which questions probably, you know, caused them the most trouble, which ones were easiest, that kind of thing. All right, so um, this is another report thing. The top one on the screen um, shows how you can get a, a report detailed on one specific item and all of the student work and answers for that. The bottom one shows you that proficiency level that you indicated when you created it. Okay, so let's play. <laughs> so by far, the Quick Connect is my favorite. So we're going to take a minute here um, and make sure you've got the answer pad loaded. I don't know. Uh, Melissa, if you've had a chance at all to look in the chat to monitor that and see if anyone has any questions on getting answer pad loaded or just unmute yourself and ask. And That's me. Oh, I asked a Absolutely. Oh, oh. What's up? Sorry, I don't have my camera on. I'm eating. Um, if you could at the data stuff, like when you get all those scores, can you export those into like an Excel CSV file? Like, can I get them out of AnswerPad easily so I can put them somewhere else or? Absolutely, and I'll show you that when we're going, when we're kind of going through it. No, you're good. I'm sorry if you said that, I missed it. Oh, no, I did not say it, so don't be sorry. <laughs> that was an excellent question. Yeah, they do have um, where you can download all of your reports. It's really nice. Great, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's, um, let's take a look at this. So here's your teacher dashboard that you would come into, and we're going to go right to this interactive, and I'm going to do quick connect. So here's my quick connect board, and up here on the left, as you can see, is the connect code. So where it asks you to put in a connect code, you're going to put that in, and it does not it's not case sensitive. You can use upper or lower case. It's C-M-A-R-O, looks like Camaro without the first A, and the second one is not an E. So 
never mind. <laughs> um, but there's the connect code. And the next screen is going to ask you for a name it, for this demo. You may use any fun name you want. Megan's already in. And as you see when, as soon as you get in, you're going to see your name pop up on my screen, which is fun. I got a question, too, because you were brain going. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. If students put in inappropriate names, can you kick them out? Um, yeah, what you're going to want to do, obviously, is, is ahead of time have a talk with them and tell them that, you know, that this, you need to know who's answering what and you won't um, broadcast any of this or put any of this up on the board with, you know, with their names showing so they don't have to worry about that, that the names are only for you. So just really encourage that they put their real name in. Otherwise, you're not going to have any clue who's, who's got what, right? So, um, we may have practiced that part too. Pardon me? I so said we may have practiced that part too with anonymous names. Ah, well, Amelia Earhart's in here now. So, oh, there you so go. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, all right, so this little button here kind of, you know, makes it big, makes it small if you need to zoom in on somebody or not. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open this and send you something because right now you're looking at a blank screen. So I'm going to go over here to choose a question and I'm just going to, and you can see there's all different types that we can do. I'm going to just do a quick up down, which looks like a thumb up, thumb down. And before I do that, I can capture uh, everything that's done, but so I don't have to forget, you know, or, or try to remember. I'm just going to go with auto capture. So that will be helpful. And I'm going to go ahead and send this out. And I'm just going to ask, and, and in a classroom, I would ask the kids, you know, because I, I do math. So I'd be like, oh, make sure you got your calculator, make sure you've got some, you know, something to write with or whatever. Or if you're doing some kind of language arts, you might, you know, if you're looking through a book or something, you might want to ask them to have the book there if you're going to be doing some looking at passages of it or something. So I would just say, hey, is everybody ready? Everybody's got all their stuff on. I'm going to send you this out. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. You're going to see that when you get it on your screen. And if you look at mine for a second, you can see that this shows everybody's got it and they're working. As you get it, it will come in. And you have to hit submit. There you go. If you look down here for a second on my screen, you will also see, it's not giving me full here. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's, it could just be my screen, <laughs> but it does say I have 100% up and zero down. So it gives you a little stats on, on how it's going. Um, I'm gonna use this moment to show you real quick how I can do some feedback. So I'm gonna give everyone um, a green positive feedback which shows up in your screen on the top right. You'll see a green when it shows up. Um, I can also give you a quick little great job and you'll see a little bubble thing that appears and like a little speech cloud. Go ahead and pop that open and then you can get that feedback and see how that looks. So it's nice. And, and my capture is recording all of that, which is great too. And I will show you where that all goes in a little bit here. All right, so we're gonna do another one. So when I go over here to my question type, there's a lot of different things. So there's some multiple choice. I might wanna use that if, um, if it's, you know, some confusing terms or something that I wanna just kind of go through and review with them test review, you can do this, you know, or reviewing yesterday's material. If you're just, you know, if you had a lot of, of concept terms that you're just, you know, they're a little confusing, you just want to go through with that. Um, some true false. It's great for coming in kind of like the opposite of your exit ticket. And when they're first coming in, just make sure that they remember what they need from yesterday. Because again, on the fly, adjustment if they come in and nobody can remember what the heck you talked about yesterday <laughs> you know you're really going to need to start with some review um so you got a lot of this good stuff we're going to go up oh, before i forget the web page you can actually send them a web page to go to and then they have to um, indicate if they read it or not before they move on unfortunately 
all the web pages I tried did not work. So I contacted the answer pad and they said, yeah, they're having a lot of trouble with that right now. And a lot of them just aren't, aren't letting them use it. So that feature, I was really a little disappointed. That feature is not working well at all. I couldn't get anything to load. So we're going to look at drawing. So I'm going to send, oh, and in drawing, here's my template gallery, all kinds of great stuff. There's fun things. There's exit tickets that are amazing. Um, there's your free ones, the 12 free. So they're not bad, but there's a lot more that you can get. These organizers are amazing too. The concept maps are very cool. So you can send all kinds of great stuff out. Um, I am going to go into my favorites. You can favorite them and build a little file. So I did that and I'm going to send you some graph paper and don't draw yet, but when you get this graph paper, I want you to look on that top tab, the, the top task kind of bar in your um, program, you should see a, like a little paintbrush. And you can click on that to bring a dot, drop down menu and look for the straight line. And I want you to click on that straight line and I want you to draw me using the graph paper the best you can. And if you know, don't worry about if it's right or wrong. I want you to draw me a right triangle. So while you're doing that, I'm going to take show names off. And I'm going to wait. And you, if you look at my screen, you can see all those little things. Actually, I'm going to take show answers off too. So now you'll see what that happens. So I know that people are done and their answers are in when that little rolling ball thing stopped. There's one there. The ball stopped rolling and it puts this little funky spy looking guy at the bottom of the, <laughs> he looks like one of those spies. I still have three people working. So, you know, if you're, if you're really hoping that they all get this, if this was something you reviewed at this point, you could be talking to them saying, oh, let's remember some of the um, characteristics of a right triangle, blah, blah, blah. Or I would like to use it. I like to do a lot of inquiry and discovery lessons. So we may have just talked about, um, 90 degree angles. You know, we may have just talked about all kinds of angles, acute angles, obtuse angles. So I might ask them to draw an acute triangle or draw, you know, so they, they have to take that concept one, one further. If, you know, we may have not even studied triangles yet. Who's, who's not in? <laughs> Someone's not in. Are you okay? Do you need well, to? It might be me. I'm clicking submit, but for some reason it's not submitting. I have accidentally dropped out of the app and came back in, so that might be the problem. And as you know, it and I'm not offended. With all technology, this can happen. <laughs> this can certainly happen. So for the demo, I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. But so I I can actually show the answers without the names. Look how brilliant. So if if I was just introduced, if I didn't even introduce triangles yet, and we just talked about angles maybe, and I wanted to start on triangles, you know, if I did this and I had all 100%, that again is that on the fly thing. I'm not going to now introduce what's a right triangle. Obviously, they got it. So I might go, oh, awesome. I'm giving their little feedback, blah, blah, blah. Ask them to do an acute triangle or an obtuse. So, you know, you, it, you can really drive the lesson is what it can do. And then I, you know, if I wanted to broadcast this up on the screen, obviously I would leave, leave the names off. So um, real quick to show you, <laughs> just got somebody else, just to show you real quick how this looks. Um, if, for example, I just wanted to continue with the same thing or wanted you to, if they were all wrong, um, I can hit this little lock or unlock button and when I hit that, you're going to see a little message that pops up to you that says, oh, try it again. So you're going to hit OK. You can actually X out, clear your whole thing, um, and take it from there and go to, you know, try it again. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, and that would be a great thing, too. I could maybe say, oh, OK, give me a different looking right triangle. Give me another right triangle that looks different from the first one you drew. So that's an excellent excellent thing so i you know can obviously give these little green things i can give some feedback great job send it to them on and on so um good i'm gonna move to the i'm gonna 
move along because, <laughs> oh, and there's our names. All right, so I'm gonna close this session because we're gonna run short on time and I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna close this session. I'm gonna show you real quick where all this goes. So when I close it, it's gonna go blank on your screen. So bye. <laughs> but it's gone, but it got saved over here in the portfolio. So when I open this portfolio, there it is. This is the question we just did. I had five responses. When I click on it, I can see there's Amelia Earhart's. It was beautiful. Um, and I can go down here and look and I can see that I gave like on this one. This was a great one. And there's the green thing I gave her. There's the feedback I gave her. So it's all in there. And there's where you can download. But even before you do that, you can go over here and you can actually um, search by person if you wanted and just get everything that they did that day or, or over the last week or something. So you can download it all. Um, you can, it, it says you can save to Google right now. They are having a Google issue. That's my second issue that I'm disappointed in. They said that Google is not seeing them as a verified um, site. So I'm not really sure what that entails, but there you go. So, this is kind of your an overall view if you went into i don't have um the report things set up to actually show you but it looks the same thing and you can download your report results so there we go so we're going to go ahead and slide back into this so any questions or comments so far on the answer pad Maybe um, some ideas or suggestions you can think of that popped in your head of how you might want to share it or, you know, so if you want to take the mic at all or, or pop something into the um, chat room there or, or questions or any comments at all that you have, we'd love to hear them. You'll have another chance too, so it's not like your only chance. <laughs> and if, Melissa, if you want to monitor that chat room, if you want to let me know if there's anything I can answer. And we can also like save the questions all for the end too, if you want. I know that we're That's running kind of short on, on time, but. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing immediate or major in the chat. I'm gonna move on. Okay, hold those thoughts, we'll be back. All right, so let's look at how this stacked up. Um, it doesn't meet a C standards, not on its own, not much. So certainly not much for students. You really have to be creative in, in how you're using the questions, how you're using the whole format, um, it, just some good strong instructional strategies and it will meet those. It's really better designed for the educator standards with the formative assessment that it allows for, it hits those much better. Okay, and using the Triple E framework, as you can see now, this is with effective teaching strategies, not on its own, um, then it really scores well with engagement and enhancement, not well with extending the learning goals. And that's not to say that it can't, but you would really have to dive in and, and come up with some strategies for extending it that way. So the pros, it is great for learning styles, it appeals to a ton of different learning styles. Um, it engages and motivates the students, you know, for, for less fear of, of being involved with things. Um, great for formative assessment, and it actually allows for the variety, a variety of teaching strategies in that interactive mode. But there's some down stuff. Um, on its own, it does not score well in our things that we used there. Uh, you do have to have a lot of creative lesson planning and good strategies. Does any technology tool, it can be a distraction. And there's some system issues. So hopefully they'll be working those out. So um, some teaching strategies, we talked a little bit about, you know, I like to use it for inquiry based. Um, you can prompt some discussions on the, the, um, the whole uh, triangle thing. If they came in and some were right and some were wrong and they, you know, had never been introduced to it before, I could start a discussion on, well, what makes these right? What do these have that these don't? That kind of a thing. So, you know, review for test. Uh, you, but there's lots of ways that you can, that they can demonstrate their knowledge with all the different formats that are on there. So, 
we can, I'm going to hold off on this screen though and let Melissa go ahead and, and introduce hers. So if you have some questions, you can throw them in the chat. So maybe we can get to them, but if not, we certainly can look at them after because I don't want to, I don't want to monopolize. Good. Okay. Melissa. Thanks. You're so efficient. I love it. <laughs> okay. So I am going to talk about insert learning and kind of walk you through the process that I have when I lesson plan, which is probably pretty similar to what most of you do, what most educators do. Um, I always start with kind of my learning goals and the standards. Um, in this case, when I was designing my unit, um, my, my real unit for my students was on human rights for their research paper. Um, I cared more about obtaining several snapshots. So I mentioned earlier, I always care more about formative assessment than summative. So I wanted a lot of opportunities for them to um, uh, demonstrate their learning rather than a large scale summative assessment. And I also really wanted a lot of flexibility in how they demonstrated that learning. Uh, so at first glance, insert learning seemed like an appropriate tool. And the main screen uh, showed some icons that gave me an indication that flexibility might be something that it offered. Uh, insert Learning, as you guys know now, because hopefully most of you installed it, is a Chrome extension. And you do sign up for free unless you want more than uh, five lessons. I believe it's $40 for a year, which I did not pay because I'm a cheapskate, so I only use the free <laughs> version. Um, and the basic premise is that you find web content um, that you would like to use uh, and you add scaffolds or interactions to it. And you, or you can um, use what other educators have already created because we're teachers, so we beg, borrow, and steal. Um, so once you have uh, decided that, you kind of look and see what they have to offer. So again, the main page says that it's really good for differentiation, student voice, student choice, and those all relate to the initial goals that I had set. Um, differentiation occurs with the scaffolds that you add on. Um, those come with the basic tools. And student voice is heard in terms of the discussion questions that you could post, but also students are allowed to annotate the text, and so their voices could be heard through that as well. Um, once you sign up, um, you do, again, have those options to either use your own web content that you find, um, or you can use others. And you even have the option to collaborate with other teachers. Mm -hmm. I have not used this feature, but I believe it's with other teachers that you work with. So maybe if you co-teach a class, this would be a good option for you. And once you have chosen a text, uh, you decide on a lesson plan template. And then the next set of decisions that you have to make involve which strategies you're going to use uh, to go along with the tool. So once you have made a decision about the web content, you have to ask yourself some, some decisions and these really aren't, uh, or you have to ask yourself some questions and they're not all that different from questions that you ask um, if you're not using a tech tool. So you have to think about where your students are going to struggle and how you'll help them, uh, what formative assessment checkpoints that you want, uh, how you want them to engage with the text and how you will extend their learning. And on the upcoming slides, you'll actually see some examples of what I used with my actual students. Um, and one of the basic tools that Insert Learning offers is question stems. And that's what you see on this uh, slide. And actually their question stems are pretty decent. They can lend themselves to pretty deep learning. Um, this particular slide uh, shows what they offer, but you can't really see 
you can actually change it to write your own question sums. So you're not limited by just what they offer. Um, we can slide to the next one, which shows a different basic tool, which is called a sticky note. And on this example, I've used the sticky note tool to embed a video about a concept that my students didn't really have much background information about, um, but you can use it for other options. You can add notes, you can embed yourself reading the passage or explaining the concept. Um, you can embed other media other than videos as well. Um, but really, the other formative assessments that you've used will guide your decisions about what uh, tools to use and when and how many, um, what type of supplementary information to add. Um, really, you have to know your students and where they stand. So we talk about the importance of formative assessment, and this is kind of a good example of that. Um, one tiny, maybe picky note of mine is that insert learning can make the page look really messy and crowded. And I found that some of my students who I thought should use some of the scaffolds more than what they did didn't use them because they were a little hard to see and they kind of overlooked them because it was hard to tell what was part of the text, what was a scaffold, because the more you add to it, they just kind of start to blend. So that was one of my, I guess, nitpicky things on there. So the next slide uh, shows you some of the other basic tools that Insert Learning offers. Um, you can do highlighting, you can do annotating, uh, you can do open-ended questions, and those are kind of neat because yes, you can turn them into discussion questions. However, you can also ask students to go onto other sites and bring back information. I think I added a slide here where you can see an example of that. And so you're asking them to engage in other forms of thinking, like evaluating other websites and bringing in other connections and examples. So again, that's the teaching strategies that you're kind of bringing into it that does more than what the, the tool itself can do. And one thing that I think is one of the greatest options of Insert Learning are the 60 additional tools that you can embed, embed there we go, uh, which are on the next slide. And this is just a small portion of the list that you can see. And teachers can use these as scaffolds, but they can also have students use these as ways to demonstrate their learning. And I like them because they're a little bit more active rather than passive demonstrations of their learning, which is something we referenced earlier. Um, they do offer tutorials for all of them, which is great because most of these uh, definitely are for the more tech savvy user. So I'm going to, uh, you can, it's fine if you switch the screen, but I'm going to drop this into chat and it is the list of these. But you also have to, there's not a direct link to it. You actually have to kind of click around for it. So I tried to provide instructions for how to do it. But I think it's pretty cool to look at some of the options over there. So the next slide shows, um, oh, I'm sorry, there we go. Um, something, there we go. I have terrible eyesight, goodness sakes. Um, just a different way that uh, you can use scaffolds for students, maybe setting a purpose for a text. Um, and it's just a different way to show that you have to use your teacher strategies and your best judgment for your students. But it also kind of reiterates that insert learning is pretty great for differentiation. You can differentiate for level content and context. Um, and some of it is just based on the content that you've chosen, but also for the 
uh, based on the scaffolds that you put into place for your students. Um, and once your formative assessment is ready, then it's time to actually assign it to your students. So then you click on the class whom you want to take the assessment. You decide, are you going to link it to Google Classroom? You're going to assign it as a link or give a code. And then this is what your dashboard looks like once you have a class or multiple classes set up and an assignment ready to go. So now that you guys are ready, I have a couple of prefaces. One, this is a very serious article that you guys will interact with on the onion. <laughs> I would never give my middle school students a live link to the onion. I guess I should uh, protect my uh, professional reputation um, that I, I would not do that. Uh, but second, don't be alarmed whenever you log in with the link that I will drop in. You are logging in as a teacher and that is what we wanted. So you will be allowed to add scaffolds and change the content and that's good. Please do so. And even for those of you who are very tech savvy and time efficient and you would like to do some of those more high tech ones, feel free. So I am going to drop this link and in a second the screen will change and your code will be on there. And go ahead and log in. And if you are struggling, please go ahead and unmute your mic or drop a comment in. I need help. <laughs> uh, I, I'm running okay. into hiccups because I already had an insert learning account that I've already used. So I like, I can't find where to put that class code. Okay. So awesome. do you have an additional Google account? Hold please. <laughs> uh, and I wonder if hers might just look like, like mine. Like yours. Yeah. I'm going to flip over and see. If it already looks like this, Megan, then that's fine. You're in. You just, you don't have to use the code. Because I don't have to use the code when I go in to that link. Okay, can I get the code again? I think I might have found something. Absolutely. There it is. And actually, let me see if I can... Yeah, I, I've got a solution for you what? if you need it. <laughs> Not sure why I'm on there. Ooh, I, uh, I figured it out. I could add a second class. We're good. Oh, Sorry. Yes, wonderful. Said, okay. Did you find? Yeah, when you go under your class under dashboard, and then you can click to enroll in a class. When you oh, click okay. class, it's either create a class or enroll there we go. In a class. Yeah, I found it. Hooray! Sorry, ladies. That's okay. No, I'm happy you're in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn off my camera for about two minutes while you guys just go mess with the scaffolds and do your thing. And then when I turn my camera back on in about two minutes, I know that we're super short on time. We'll just kind of talk about the strategies and kind of wrap up. Um, and then I will insert our PDF of our slides so you can kind of see where this um, fell on the, um, the Triple E framework. And I think you have, you know, we've already kind of talked about why we're doing it. So right now, you guys just go play.
Okay, about 15 more seconds. Okay, so we will get to the end of our presentation and talk about kind of how this stacks up and then conclude because we really appreciate your time. So as always at the end of a lesson, you kind of go back to your original goals and see how does it stack up. So if i go immediately back to the ISTE standards i know i didn't tell you which ones that i chose but i go back and as you can see three of my four areas this one did pretty well the fourth one meh and my biggest issue was that i could not hide the other students answers in the discussion one uh, the discussion sections um i did not like that it crushed their voice and then in terms of the Triple E framework, my biggest issue was that technology, when you uh, click off for uh, other websites, it becomes a really big distraction, especially for middle school students. Um, that Fortnite, man, it gets you. So mm -hmm. Fortnite videos, Fortnite websites, and they're just kind of off. So that, that was a pretty big issue for me. Um, but for the rest, it was pretty good. The biggest pro for this was the flexibility that it offered me. The biggest drawback um, I had mentioned earlier was the messiness, the visual, uh, lack of visual appeal when you add the scaffolds. And the teaching strategies I kind of talked about as I moved along, um, but it definitely needs them for this to be successful on its own, not so much. So we're gonna wrap up before we do any kind of questions. So let's do a quick wrap up. And um, the presentation shared two very different tech tools for formative assessment. And we talked about how we can assess these tools using a consistent framework we chose triple e and the learning goals from ISTE standards and the main takeaway is obviously you have to be very deliberate when you're choosing tech tools that you allow into your classroom um, and to use with your students and this when you're using formative assessment especially uh, this requires an appropriate blend of teaching strategies and the technology and obviously this is part of a big puzzle if you are working for student success so there you have it um, we sure appreciate you coming and feel free to contact us if you want to discuss this further or anything like that melissa's going to drop our entire um a pdf of our slide deck into well a link to it on on drive um, that you are welcome to take and have and certainly ask us any questions you might have about either of these tools and we'll do our best to either answer or tell you we have no clue <laughs> <laughs> send you to the help place <laughs> so, so yeah um any questions feel free to ask if you have to go um thanks for coming we love you <laughs> And thank you, Melissa and Nancy, for a great webinar tonight. Oh, thank you, guys. Yay, it was fun. It's fun. These are both really fun tools. They